are tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. Oh, 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 yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday, and we've got a guy from arguably the best team in football, John Feliciano from the Niners, longtime NFL starting O-lineman who's the swing guy now for the Niners, will join us momentarily. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings. Patron of the day is Jarrett Parker. Love this time of year because so many people, I think most of them, probably become patrons. Patreon.com slash RT Media to get the even money bets in black and white. But hopefully, while they're there, they get a chance to be a part of the family, a part of the crew. It's a private Slack channel just for the tuckheads. Love, love, love talking with all of you. Very appreciative of all the kudos that everybody sent my way about the Titan Saints game. That was an absolute blast. Loved it and love talking with current players, any players, but especially current guys like Niners offensive lineman John Feliciano. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, it's another Wednesday where we have an active player, which I love. Anytime I get a chance to talk to any guys that are that are still in it right now, not a has-been like me, and this guy <laughs> is having an awesome career. He's like having... The, the the interior offensive line career that I wanted to have. I'm talking about John Feliciano, the, the newest San Francisco 49er. This is the latest stop in his career. Started a ton of games with the Raiders, with the Bills, last year with the Giants. John, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate it. Man, thank you for having me. That was a what, – what an introduction. I appreciate it. Well, it's true. So, dude, let's start first of all with Sunday – um, you've been on some good teams. You've been on playoff teams. You've gone far in the playoffs. I, I did my power rankings on Tuesday. I had you guys mm-hmm. as the number one team uh, in the NFL. You guys looked awesome. You've been on some good teams. and I know it's only yeah. one game, but how do the Niners compare to some of those other really good teams you've been on? Yeah, and that um, during the process of free agency, I think that was, I mean, one of the highlights of uh, – potentially coming here at that point it was like you start looking at the roster and what John and Kyle have uh, created here over the last few years and uh you know watching film on like last season watching film of teams similar that we were we were playing and, and watching their style of offense uh man it was almost a no-brainer to, when when the opportunity came uh regardless of you know the position I'm playing or my role on this team was going to be when you look at on paper, you're like, dang, this this team could really could really make some noise and, and you're getting, you know, this is my ninth year in the league, starting to run out of time to win win a Super Bowl. So uh the man, the the players that John and Kyle have got here is uh it's crazy, man. We, we got, you know, the best linebackers, um really great safeties. Um, um <laughs> C Mac, uh, Ayuk and, and Debo, it, the list goes on and on. Kittle, I mean, we have the names and, and we have the coaches, so it's it's a it's an exciting time to be here. What um what was sort of the thing that jumped out to you the most, I guess, about the Niners? I mean, it's your fourth team, so you've been for several. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. something about the organization or just the talent they have there or the way Kyle coaches, but. Anything in particular jump out or unique about this stop? Uh, I've just always been a, such a fan of the offense. Um, last year with the Giants, we, we ran the ball a lot. Uh, but, you know, my my previous three years in Buffalo with the emergence of uh, Josh, uh, you know, we were definitely a pass-first offense, um, you know, which was great. And we won a lot of games. And Josh is an amazing player. But, uh, you know, Watching the the Forty Niners over the years and just how much they put into their run game and and it's crazy, man. I mean, 
learning this, this is my first time having to learn a new playbook in, in four or five years uh and it was frustrating at times just because how much stuff we have in and uh frustrating because i couldn't get it down right away i had to really work and and you know, it was the first time in four four years that i had to learn something new and and there were some struggles and now that you know i got it down it, it's it's it speaks to who they are as coaches and, and how smart they are. And Kyle is just a mad scientist. I mean, some of these team meetings, they're different for me because Kyle's up there for a good 25, 30 minutes and he's just laying out so much football knowledge. And you're just like sometimes almost in awe of not a lot of coaches, you know, can understand O-line play uh, the way he does. So it's a, uh, it's refreshing. It's crazy. So I always tell the story, John, um, over the years, whether it's like guys in Washington or Houston, when Kyle was there with Kubiak or whatever, mm -hmm. when I first got in the media, I've had guys at every position tell me that the Shanahan offense is perfect for them. Like mm -hmm. Sage Rosenfels played quarterback. He's like, it's a really quarterback friendly offense. I think Owen Daniels at tight end was like, dude, the whole offense is perfect for a tight end. All the O-linemen say that, the running yeah. backs say it, and the receiver. I'm like, well, so wait a minute. If every guy, if every guy at every position says the offense is like designed for them and perfect for uh, them, it must be a pretty good offense. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the things. Um, you know, I'm a bigger guy. Uh and some, you know. One of the when I talked to uh, Coach Forster, uh, when I did, I was I was there to sign, and he was like, "Yeah, man, like some some someone was like, oh, do you think he can play in this system?' Blah blah blah." And he's like, "I turned on your film, and there was the it was a uh, Commanders Commanders game, the first one. He's like, I see you pulling and all this blah blah blah. He's like, you can you can play in this offense, and I was like, dude, I feel like this is my offense. Like I feel like I'm like outside zone. I, like I don't." like stress like i feel like i can reach anybody um so it's been fun to on it it's been so fun playing in this offense so far what what do you weigh right now john uh you know it's off day um, <laughs> <laughs> uh around 320 320 but my goal weight's from 322 to 326 i'm i'm under there i'm probably good days like 315 bad day like 321 you know God, I used to go to camp between 320 and 325 because I wanted to play mm -hmm. at like 315. I always lose like five, yeah. eight pounds in camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had and crazy also... short arms. <laughs> so I wanted to be able to like have enough power that like if the guy bulled, I could I could sit on him, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Although now, people... like it's funny. I mean, you're you you had you're having a longer career than I had. I played seven years, but I guess in hindsight, I I kind of wish I had like played a, maybe a little bit lighter. Cause I guess I feel like as I got older, you know, most of my power was from my technique anyway, you know what yeah. I mean? Like from my hands inside and yeah. jumping guys, you know, I, I feel like I got most of the power from that stuff as opposed to like how much I weighed at that point. I a hundred percent agree with you. I mean, when I was in Oakland, I mean, my rookie year, I mean, I got up there. I was 355. Whoa. How tall are you? Yeah. Six, four. Wow, uh, 355. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got, you know, I've dropped up, down a lot. The, the, the lightest I've played was my last year in Buffalo. Uh, and I was like, I got down to like 305. Uh, wow. Up that camp pretty lean. And I think that's better if I was playing uh, center than, than at guard. Uh, so right now, like, if I'm, if, say, if like something happens, I need to play center, I like to be, I would probably be coming game day 315. But, you know, if guard, I like to, depending who I'm playing against. Like, if we were playing, like, the Steelers with Cam, you want that a little extra weight on you just because he's going to bore Russia. <laughs> Dude. Your back's going to yeah. be sore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Hey, um, so you started a lot of games, including 15 last year for the Giants. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me uh, about – so your role this year is – I'm a, you're, like, the swing inside guy, right? Yeah, yeah. So what's that like for you having started so much the last few years to kind of mm -hmm. going back to being a swing guy? Yeah, it's um a lot of checking your ego and uh realizing, you know, 
your time in this league, you know, going into my ninth year, could I went somewhere else and started and, and not, uh, you know, be home in January, early January. Yeah. You know, probably. Um, but you know, I'm trying to win, man. And, uh, and, uh, you know, before, when I signed here, there was, you know, I, I competed, they, they were going to let me get a shot to, to play. Um, and you know, it's a long season, so I just got to do my role right now and master it and, and just stay ready. Cause it's, it's not likely that all five, you get through a season with just five guys. No, no question about it. I think I went like three or four years in a row, dude, where I didn't start the opener. I sucked in one-on-ones in yeah. training camp. So like they never started me in the opener. They always had some guy that was better at one-on-ones and then either he wouldn't drill. play well or he would get hurt and they'd yeah. put me in and I'd be fine. Like one-on-ones are not what the games are like. Mm-hmm. Like, but for some reason in training camp, the teams I was on, they're like, I just, dude, I have 31 inch arms. Like yeah. if you're going to play guys and like, but in, in a game, it's just not like that. I Like, in one-on-ones, I'd be like, okay, I got set like this and do this with my hands. Mm-hmm. In a game, I just played. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You don't have a guy – you're not playing guard and the guy's lining up at, as a five technique and rushing outside the tackle. <laughs> no, so. it, 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 exactly. It, it's not like that at all. John and I both played in Buffalo, and when I think about Buffalo, I think about Labatt Blue Light. So awesome. We would go to the big tree – get wings, get chicken fries, and crush Labatt Blue Light. Bledsoe would pay the tab. It was awesome. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Um, you know what's funny, John? I um, I loved I, – I much preferred starting over being the swing guy, and I think most guys do because of two, two reasons, right? One, it, it's fun to play. Like, it's fun to play yeah. in the games. But secondly – when I was the swing guy, I was the next guy up at center, both guards. And I was the second guy up at both tackles. That's a lot of work. Like <clears throat> to feel like you're prepared at all those spots. Mm-hmm. And then like, you know how it's, well, you'll see this year. You haven't done it in a while, but like, there's a lot of plays where like one of the guys like gets up slow and you're like, you oh, crap, mini, I'm at left guard. Heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh crap. It's third and 12. I got to go to the left guard. Or I go get to the right guard. It's like before every series, I would always yeah. just do like one or two pass sets at all three spots in case, in case I had to go in there on third and long. People would like make fun of me. The other guys are like, yeah, you're ready. To-. I'm like, dude, I'm not going in there without having done a pass set in two hours uh, <laughs> against some of these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was jumping on the bike, doing squats, trying to do a little stretch and doing a couple sets. Man, I was just like, man, especially when it got towards the end. I was like, it's the fourth quarter, a couple minutes, five, six minutes left. I was like, you guys better, <laughs> better not go. I am so stiff right now. <laughs> like, Well, you know what, though? At least you guys were running the ball then. Yeah. I remember um, my third year, we were playing at Kansas City, which is loud as hell. Yep. And we were getting killed and uh like by like 20 and we're oh, throwing every play and got and I John, I was like, these these guys better stay in this game. I I, I wanted <laughs> no part of having to go in there with that noise. And it was a Sunday night game and it was like mm-hmm. loud and cold. And I was like, no, thank you. Like so one of the guys was limping. I'm like, you got this. You got this. You're tough. You're mentally tough. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me. I think it was my second or third year in Oakland. Kaleshi went down. It was a two minute fourth quarter, two minute drive against the Browns. And he goes down first play of the two minute. John, oh, I remember we and finished the we we went into overtime and he came back. Oh like, God. Um but I remember the next day, I was like, why am I so sore? I was, I felt more sore then than after a real game. That is funny, man. But also, like, just like during the week, like, having to watch, like, both D tackles and all, you know, mm-hmm. like, all the different guys as opposed yeah, to, like, everybody. hey, here's my guy all week, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um. So, uh, I, I didn't realize this until I, I saw this today, that, that this month, am I right, John, that this month is – 
uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Yep. And there aren't very many of you guys. There aren't many Latinos, I don't think, in the NFL. Correct. I mean, mm-hmm. you probably know, but I, I know yeah. there's some. But is that a big um, is that a big source of pride for you? A hundred percent. I got the flag, the Puerto Rican flag, tattooed on me on my snap hand, so I look at it all the time. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of us out here, so it's, it's special to, to be one of them. Uh, on our team, we have me, Alfredo and, uh, Fred. So we're pretty stacked over here. Um, why is it, why is this sort of pride? Just, you know, it's just, it's special because you know, the fans, especially, you know, I have guys in my DMs a lot, just like. Man, I'm from the island. Uh, I look up to you, blah blah blah, and that. Uh, especially being Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican culture, we love to to be Puerto Rican. We we shout it. We there's there's decals. There's I have boxing gloves in my car. I mean, we're loud, um, and it's just a source of pride. So it's a uh, when I get those DMs or like you know those shouts, shout outs, uh, it feels it fills me with so much joy. Um. You know, I love that because I like I'm from Eastern Pennsylvania, and like uh, I don't know if you know Alex Anzalone, the linebacker for the Lions. He's from my hometown of, of Why okay. Missing, and so like I think anybody like you're you're proud of when people from your area go on to do stuff or have success. It's just cool. Mm-hmm. And I I wrote and I, I went to Princeton, John. So like mm-hmm. not not like an NFL powerhouse, right? <laughs> so I would write. Um, at the top of my notes every day, like why I'm missing Princeton? Cause I kind of felt like I was like repping all those people, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to like, remember like, dude, a lot of people are living vicariously through you, man. Like keep this thing going for them. Yeah. And I mean, like on your dark, your, on your low days where you're like, shit, I'm a backup. Like, Oh, I think I can do better. Blah, blah, blah. All this. You're just like, man, you have all these people wishing they can be where you're at right now. You know, so that makes that makes everything easier. A thousand percent. There's no question. Uh, John, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate it. Um, Hopefully I'll get one or two of your games this year on the radio, maybe and get a chance to see you, maybe say hi before the game. But I've I've been following your career for a long time. Um, You know, I, I was I'd like to think now you were like a legit starter for a bunch of years. What I like to say is that I felt like I probably had a four-year run where I felt like I was one of the two or three best swing guys in the league. You uh-huh. know, like that I started 13 games in one year in Buffalo. We went nine and four. So there was a couple of years where um I got a chance to play a decent amount. But yeah. um I I I I got I got a lot of respect for what you're doing the rest of the year. You gotta get 10, dude. So you gotta get 10. You yeah. gotta get a Super Bowl and you gotta get 10. That's 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 the game plan here. Uh, I love it, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. What are you on social or anything? You want to throw anything out there or yeah, uh, or social, whatever? My Instagram is Jonathan Feliciano and my uh Twitter is at Mongo Feliciano. It's uh that's it. Appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you. Of course, John. Thank you so much, man. Stay healthy. Have a great year. Appreciate it, bro. Listen, in football, the fourth quarter is where the magic happens. It's where games are won. It's where champions are made. And in business, it's where sales teams become legends. That's why HubSpot built Sales Hub to give sales reps the deal-making tools they need to win their Q4. Sales Hub's prospecting workspace organizes your schedule, goals, and to-do list in one place to save your team precious fourth quarter time. And smart sequences help sales reps close deals faster than ever. So get ready to dominate Q4 with Sales Hub. Learn more at hubspot.com slash sales. Tux takes. All right, Ross. A lot of injuries of note, including Browns offensive tackle Jack Conklin. He tore his ACL. Eagles linebacker Nakobe Dean is out several weeks with a foot sprain. And cornerback James Bradbury is unlikely to play while he's in concussion protocol. Steelers wide receiver Deontay Johnson is out several weeks with a hamstring injury, while teammate Cam Hayward is out for a while as well with a groin injury, and he is expected to get surgery. Broncos tight end Greg Dulcich is out indefinitely as well. I feel like week one 
typically has more than its fair share of injuries because it makes sense, right? In the sense that a lot of these guys are exerting themselves more than they have in a long, long time. You know, there's a big difference between 10 snaps in a preseason game, if that, and 65 snaps in an NFL regular season game going against starters. And I just think some of these guys overextend themselves a little bit with some of these soft tissue injuries. I will say there's a big difference between, like, Jack Conklin, torn ACL, that's rough. I mean, he's a very good right tackle. Now the Browns will go with the huge rookie. Might be He's up there with Mylotta and, those, and Trent Brown is like the biggest players in the NFL. I think he's 6'8", 375, Dewan Jones. I mean, that is just a mammoth, mammoth human being. So Dewan Jones, I think, will take over for Conklin at right tackle. But my point is there's a big difference between being like done for the year like Conklin versus most of these other guys. Look, it's not good that the Steelers don't have Cam Hayward for a while or the you know any of these injuries. But the rest of these, at least for right now, it sounds like these guys will be back this season. It's just a matter now of, of how many games they miss. But big difference, especially early in the season, I would say, between a season-ending injury and guys that are just going to miss a couple weeks. Chiefs, they signed Chris Jones to a new one-year deal. He lost about $3.6 million. He has a bunch of incentives to try and make it back. So I'm going to make this, Jack, my Labatt take of the week. It's presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Canadian Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. If you've listened or watched this show for a while, you know I always root for every player to get as much money as they possibly can. I am team player, pro player, which is why I never understood what Chris Jones was doing. If you're already on your second contract or later, it makes absolutely no sense to hold out. He cost himself $3.6 million between the $2 million of fines, which cannot be rescinded by the team, the game check over a million, the 500K workout bonus, and now he has to hit incentives just to get the money back that he lost? Are you kidding? When you say, oh, well, it's easy, 30%, 50%. Oh, well, we'll ter- tell Aaron Rodgers that. Tell Jack Conklin that. If Chris Jones gets hurt in the next game, he doesn't see any of that money back. It's one of the worst holdouts I've ever seen, and he should really be the poster child now moving forward for why NFL players should hold in and not hold out. Don't give him any of your money back. Seahawks, they signed 41-year-old Jason Peters for his 20th season. Eagles signed linebacker Nick Morrow to the active roster, and Rashawn Evans to the practice squad, and the Browns signed off of the tackle Ty Nasecki. Well, so uh, Ty Nasecki, at times, I've seen him play really well. He's kind of been, you know, one of those guys that you feel like you can get by with him at, at, a, at a decent enough level as a, as a pass-blocking offensive tackle. As for the Eagles linebacker situation, you know, Rashawn Evans is a good example, Jack. I was like, I, I forgot Rashawn Evans was on a team. I mean, like, led the Titans in tackles last year. I was kind of surprised when I saw that one. And he, and Nick Morrow, Nick Morrow led the Bears in tackles last year. So, I know the Eagles really like N'Kobe Dean, and it's a bummer for them that he's out for a while. But, you know, they've got other guys, whether it's Cunningham or Morrow or Rashawn Evans, who can play at, you know, I I think a competent level is how I would describe it. As for Jason Peters, we posted a couple videos on social media yesterday at Ross Tucker NFL and at Ross Tucker Pod that I would encourage you guys to check out because I told some stories, but just absolutely remarkable that he's still playing. I I, I, got to interview him, Jack. I might reach out to Seahawks PR. I want to know, like, why he's still playing. I don't know if 20 years was a goal. I don't know, like, 
He's already won a Super Bowl. He's made a bajillion dollars. I'm fascinated by the fact that he still wants to play professional football. But kudos to him, man. I think that's the only guy, I, only former teammate still playing now that Brady's done. I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout outs. Listen, myfrontpagestory.com. I know a lot of you have anniversaries or you know people with birthdays coming up. Please just check it out. I'm promising you guys it is the best gift you can get someone. Then there's other stuff, backofficeschedule.com, go-bangles.com, steakhousesports.com, humanheadnyc.com, sportaculture, and the always delicious Pizza Boy Brewing.